Phillips for solving paper. Same procedure, and we're talking about the Institute for Study of Totalitarian Regimes. Uh, on page 65, there's an annex with some more explanations. You, you probably would have read that. Uh, and again, you are asked to vote, which can be in favor, against, or abstain. There were three of us. Uh, one is it's me, from Estonia, uh, Kirsten from Norway, and Edna from Latvia. So this year it was very easy to, <laughs> to count. <laughs> At first, uh, Yulia Kusevnova from Moscow, uh, or from Russia, uh, so was the it's supposed to be 30 votes, but uh, we could have 29. Uh, one person did not vote. So in favor for Julia, there was 29 votes. So she's going to be a member of the <laughs> About uh, Lua Christian Doctor. <laughs> I tried to learn it. <laughs> uh, about re election from member of support. So you got uh, 28 uh, votes in favor and one against. So, congratulations. <laughs> uh, next one is a new board member. Uh, we would like to congratulate the Rita. That she's going to be a going to be a new board member. Uh, you got uh, 28 votes for paper now. And uh, one, uh, one went to Nicoletta Boisso, who was representing the Romania. And the last one, the Institute for the Study of Totalitarian Regimes, they got in favor 21 votes. One was against, and seven was abstained. So, So congratulations Rita, welcome. May I ask you to then start your job right now? <laughs> Examples from the Nazi and Soviet regimes, 
which does actually also include a, a, a far wider, bigger picture. And if you want any more specific information on that, I would really encourage you to talk with Stephen or Judith uh, later on. Uh, in Tallinn, Estonia, so uh, hosted by our friends from Estonia, uh, there will be an international training, uh, which is pretty soon, but nevertheless, uh, well, I don't, I'm not sure if registration is still possible, but if you're really, really interested, I'm sure we can make something happen. Uh, there will be also uh, a, a, a new element, which is that because last year was the first year of our four-year operating grant within the Remembrance Program of the European Union, and we used to be all the time working predominantly within the Education and Culture Program, we decided to have some kind of Remembrance and Education Council a group of people that have really uh, a huge network and a lot of uh, activities within the field of remembrance from an educational point of view, so that they will look at our material and help us plan for the coming three years. Uh, Yoke is also there in, in that council, as will be uh, uh, Mario Oya, but also the name of you, House of European History, U Story, uh, European Network for Remembrance and Solidarity, and so on. The second thing is that uh, we have been also granted a very interesting project about uh, the EU in its historical context from a uh, EU fund that seeks to promote learning about the EU in schools. Uh, Edgar is, is involved with that. Who else here in the room? I don't know. Quite yet. Helen, of course, and Francesca, of course, more than involved. Super involved. Uh, they are working throughout 2050 to finalize this historiana material, which will include timelines, decision-making activities, evidence, files, live stories. You have, if you have been in their workshops, you have seen what they are working on. And at the end of that will be the launch of that material in Florence or Barcelona. Both, I think, are not very uh, horrible places to be. So take notes and keep uh, watching our newsletters. Then, Mira hinted that already. Um, in 2015, we continue our work in the Balkans. Uh, but kind of take a twist on it because we have always focused a lot on, uh, let's say, immediate um, education innovation for, for, for the material in the classroom and the donors have always focused on reconciliation. So, uh, you know, get that group and that group together and make them agree on what happened in the bad years, more or less. We think we have to inspire people so there will be a summer school uh, on rethinking on-site learning by finding the local in the global. So we want to uh, put the national in the corner and make a lot of other kind of topics. And there's actually eight people who are working uh, on that uh, uh, region, regional material here. Uh, you must have met them or noticed them or just spoken to them. If not, I'm sure you will this evening because I do expect some singing at this. <laughs> Uh, in that project will be local workshops, so after that summer school, people attend that will go back to their schools and be able to share the results, and there will be a regional website. That will be on. Then, uh, Historiana has, uh, from, from the content point of view, always looked at what would be key moments in European history that you all can address, so that it, it's, it's most relevant and most useful. And one of the interesting seminars that already took place earlier in 2015 was the seminar in Brian Lalleux. We call it the Waterloo Seminar, but we're not allowed to do that because it is in the current territory of the municipality of Brian Lalleux in Belgium. And the results of that will come out in a booklet pretty soon in which Francesco and Joka and Stephen and a few other people have tried to gather all the information from that seminar, all the reflections into a teaching tool. And for your clear, this is quite important, I think, it's also going to be uh, in French. Uh, then, broader on about these key moments, there is, sorry? Uh, I, I'm not sure about the copy scheme, you um, It actually is going to be printed, so it would be nice to send a copy to the members also. Uh, but it's going to be available uh, on PDF online uh, on the website of your CLIO on the teaching resources, uh, just where you can find, for example, the once upon a time of the category. So it's the same as once upon a time, just much more. Yeah. No, it, it, 
It's not the same because uh, it's not like, it, it, in the sense, it is the same in the sense that it's teaching resources, but it's not uh, like the result of three years of intensive work. It's like the main outcome of one seminar, so just to manage the expectation. For some schools, should it be finding the global and the local? Should it be finding the Yeah, <laughs> it's a draft, so, so I think it's both. I think it's both. We, I can say just one sentence about that. Last year in Ochit, the opening speaker, Keith Low, Keith Brown, we have too many Keith opening our conferences, he said, uh, he spoke about the Balkan Wars from the perspective of the arms traveling from Wisconsin to Crimea back to the Balkans. That's the kind of thing we were, we were looking at. But it can be. The nice thing is that this is the, the European members in the Balkans work on this. So you can speak with them more also about the title and inputs and ideas. So coming back to the key moments, what we are also working on it already last year, but continue to work on this year, and it's good news, is that the World War I module, which you have heard about perhaps before, is now being uploaded. And it's quite large. It has many sources, many timelines. I don't know if you have some key figures or Thousands of sources. Thousands of sources, yeah, and World War One, okay, from all over the place. Uh, I, I, I do hope, and I, I would like to challenge you also to see, is it useful for you, is it useful for your members, and to bring that feedback back to us, because we need that to improve further. Then there is another module developed about the end of the Iron Curtain together with uh, some experts in different universities that's, being, that's in development, it will come later in the year. And we've started also for the coming years to uh, create this uh, Bob Straddling, I think, worked in December more on the skeleton. It's going to be uh, built further on with Chris Rowe uh, as a module. Right? Then, uh, in the Black Sea region, uh, a book is being translated and proofread in Armenian, Azerbaijani, Georgian, English, Romanian, and Ukrainian including piloting and local training, and we hope this time next year uh, that you'll be able to see it, I mean earlier, already of course online, but also in physical form. This is the, the upcoming uh, book of a very challenging, yet also inspiring project to work on. Also uh, Russian. And Russian. No. That's how we add languages. Uh, then, uh, something that Something that uh, is perhaps most relevant for you to know now is that, of course, next year there is the European Union Conference in Belfast. I will say something about that later. Uh, but also connected to the activities, that will be also the end point of this uh, historiana competition that Stephen explained earlier in the conference, um, which will be connected to the theme of the, of the conference. But more information about that will also come in the coming weeks. Um, outreach. Uh, and we, we desperately need a new website and we've gathered ideas and we are working on it. But also one that is established on a communication plan. So what do we need to communicate? What communication do we need to prioritize? Uh, the opportunities come first or developments in other countries, etc. Et uh, I hope this is something that can be done right uh, after this. Networking, uh, you must have noticed that we network, that we reach out to organizations and we make them equal partners in our development. Uh, we are not the only ones that have ideas about history in society in general and really by these partnerships we can increase our impact. So uh, your Clio is invited as an official full partner in a new Council of Europe project which I will attend in July which I will really try as much as I can to involve all. Well, Council Europe is a very big organization, covers many countries, so I will think we'll be able to invite lots of people uh, into this process. I don't know yet what it will be, but after July, after the first meeting, I will see what that project will exactly be about. Also, your story was here, as you have seen and noticed that that was another outcome of this kind of networking and partnership. Finally, uh, 
we work this year uh, on a few key targets related to advocacy. So that is the manifesto and our ideas. How do we bring them into other people's policies, basically, advocacy. Uh, and we've been successful, thanks to Stephen and Yoko, to get uh, a, a, within Europeana an education task force that will specifically work with a few stakeholders like Europeo on making sure Europeana serves the purpose of educators, not just of cultural heritage institutes and data gatherers and IT designers and all the target groups that are involved there. If you want to know more about, do approach Stephen or Yoko. Or you did. Uh, and this you were part of. Uh, we're trying to get your collective response to the EU ministers of education. Uh, we'll probably uh, stylize it a bit that you will see that your brainstorming does result in a political document. So I don't know where it will be the Helsinki Declaration of, you know, or something like that. But that's that's the way forward for us to really show that there is a democratic civil society of history educators with an opinion and ideas on what to do with it. Uh, I said finally, but I have one more slide. With a few other fields, uh, we are very happy that board members uh, can uh, take the initiative to bring to us new topics and new themes to develop. Um, and research is definitely one of them where in the past 